Good morning, Reader Branch. Welcome back to our online service. Um, I've really had a great week. The weather is beautiful. Probably a great weekend to cook out. Spend a little time with the family. Uh, remember, if you don't have an opportunity to cook out this weekend, next weekend is Mother's Day. It will be a great time to, to really celebrate and show your mom all the appreciation because we definitely love our mothers. I don't know where I would be without my mom. Um, so please don't forget, next Sunday is Mother's Day, May 10th. Uh, May 17th is going to be also another special service. Um, we will have a youth Sunday that will be led by Ben and Lily. Um, I'm really looking forward to that. Um, it's going to be a magnificent service. So, you know, if you have any, you know, youth out there, please, please uh, invite them to watch next Sunday. Um, so before we go into um, our song and worship, if you could, within the, the comment box, if you're watching Facebook Live, you know, go ahead and tell someone um, you love them or how much you love your mother or, you know, any time during the, the worship, if, you know, if you want to say amen, some of us like typing it in, others of us just like hitting that heart, you know, let those hearts flow. It shows a lot of appreciation. Um, so let's go ahead and stand up. And go to the Lord with a song. Ain't nobody do me like Jesus. Ain't nobody do me like the Lord. Ain't nobody do me like Jesus. All right, 
What a beautiful song. If you really appreciate that music, go ahead and uh, hit that heart button if you're watching on Facebook Live. Um, now we're going to take a time to go to the Lord in prayer. Um, I just want to remind you, we do have this awesome app. If you, uh, if you haven't had a chance to download our, uh, our app, um, we do have a prayer wall. So anytime you want to send in a prayer request, I'll, I'll definitely, either myself or one of the deacons or the pastor, will we'll bring it to the altar and we'll definitely go to the Lord in prayer. Um, I am one that believes in Jesus. Um, he could heal. He could fix. He could comfort. He could do anything. His mercy is so great. The grace that he gives us, oh boy, it, it just brings brings goosebumps to my arms how much you know I boy I was a mess if he could take me and change me to who I am today he could fix anything um, I have a few prayer requests that were sent in um, we definitely let's remember our health care workers during this time um, continue to remember those that are battling the coronavirus in those families who are unable to, to be there to comfort those that are going through this time of, of illness. Um, also, remember our brother Brantley Oxidine. Um, he needs our prayers. Also, Carla Jacobs and her family would really appreciate our prayers. Um, remember Linda Jacobs. And let's remember Lorita. Um, Lewis and the great nephew Ricky Cummings. We know that there are many other prayers. Um, you know, if you have a special prayer request right now, just go ahead and hit that heart button if you're watching on Facebook Live. Or just go to go to prayer with me. You know, this is a great time to get on our knees and go to the Lord. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity to Continue to worship you in a unique time where we're not even allowed to, to congregate within our house of the Lord. Your house is almost like they, they don't want us here. Lord, I just ask you that, that you will open up our nation as quick as you can so that we can come together, be a family, to sit in the pews again, to worship you, to praise you. To sing songs to you, Lord. I just ask you, those that are falling short, it's a hard time. Forgive me of all those sins, especially eating too much, Lord. Help me refrain from snacking too many times during the day, Lord. I just ask you, those that are suffering right now, to bring them calmness, to, to bring them um, patience. That long suffering, Lord, let them know that you're there with them. All these names that we have prayed about and those requests that are being sent either through Facebook Live or, or just being raised to you right now in their homes, Lord. I just ask you to, to listen to them, to answer them, because you said that all things are possible through you, Lord that you do hear our prayers, and that you do answer our prayers. Lord, remember our government. Um, continue to help them to make the right decisions. Lord, remember our youth. They're at home learning remotely. Lord, give them the, the engagement, the interest, the desire to become independent learners, Lord, during this time. Lord, look over our teachers as they try to reach out and and continue to, to mentor those that are at home. Lord, remember those that, that are poor and without food, that we find a way to, to keep them, to keep their cup filled. Um, Lord, there are so many things that we need to pray, pray for right now. Lord, I just ask you to remember all those prayers. Um, I want to go to you with Psalm 85. Prayer that the Lord will restore favor to the land. I definitely ask Jesus to restore favor to our land today. Our land, the wrath, 
is, it is a hard time. Lord, you have been favorable to your land. You have brought back the captivity of Jacob. You have forgiven the inequity of your people. You have covered all their sin. You have taken away all your wrath. You have turned from the fierceness of your anger. Restore us, O God, of our salvation, and cause your anger towards us to cease. Will you be anger, angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger to all generations? Will you not revive us again that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your mercy, Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people and to his saints. And let them not turn back to folly. Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him. That glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth may meet together. Righteousness and peace have kissed. Truth shall spring out of the earth. And righteousness shall look down from heaven. Yes, the Lord will give what is good. And our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him and shall make his footsteps our pathway. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. But even
I really hate to bother you, but Lord, I got a whole lot on my mind. I know that you're real busy, but I promise I won't take much of your time. Oh, but Lord, I need a little grace to help me make it through. Lord, I need to feel that kind of love that only comes from you.
Good morning, everyone. We are so glad that you are with us here. Whether you're viewing us from our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, or even our website, we we are so glad that you are you have tuned in to be a part of our worship service uh, today. And today we want to focus on chapter two. Verses 14 through 21 in the book of Acts. We want to continue from where we ended last week. As we look here in this passage, we begin to see that it is a a message of Peter's. So we see what happens immediately after the, the movement of the Holy Spirit. And after the movement of the Holy Spirit, we see preaching take place. And I, I'm just convinced that that every church should center around the word of God because as soon as the Holy Spirit came the word of God was preached in that upper room so we want to turn our attention to the book of Acts chapter 2 verse verses 14 through 21 now his message is much longer and just to, to save time and and to not worry your patience we're going to break this up I don't know for sure yet if it'll be two messages or if it will be three messages but whatever it's going to be, we're going to give God praise for it. And, and today, just as we look in this first section of Peter's message, we want to notice Peter's focus. We want to notice that he is very focused as he shares this, uh, the beginning part of this message. And we're, we're going to look at that. And, and I, for me, for myself, it's hard for me to remain focused uh, on a lot of days. There are days when my mind is going in so many different ways that I have a hard time just focusing. But here in this passage, we find that Peter is extremely, extremely focused. Now, while you'll find in that passage, I, I do want to share that if you want to read about somebody or you want to watch a movie about somebody who has a tremendous amount of focus, I would invite you to watch the movie Greater. In the movie Greater, it is a Christian-based movie, and it shows the, the, the walk of a young man, who uh, his walk with Christ as he is pursuing goals with football. Uh, the name is Brandon Von Burlesworth. He is a young man whose life ended way too soon. Now, you college football enthusiasts, you will remember him as an offensive lineman for the University of Arkansas. Burlesworth was not a highly recruited football player out of high school. He did have some, some scholarship offers out of high school, but they were Division II and Division III schools. He was told he was undersized and he would never be able to make it to Division I football. Well, those who doubted him certainly did not know the, the focus of this young man. If you watch the movie, you'll see that once he sets his mind to something, there's nothing that's going to get in his way. If you tell him what he needs to do to accomplish what he's wanting to accomplish, then he's going to do those very things to accomplish them. As a matter of fact, he, when he joined the University of Arkansas, he joined as a walk on and by by the end of his freshman season as a walk on as a red shirt he he had earned a full scholarship uh to the football team his sophomore year which would have been his first year uh, as a scholarship player who was actually a, on the team he earned a starting position as an offensive lineman uh, before his junior season he was selected to be one of the team's captains earning first team all SEC honors two years in a row he was selected for the 1998 uh, college football all American team he was also named as the all SEC academic honor roll for four years straight. Burleson played on two SEC Western Division Championship teams. Burleson graduated in 1998 from the University of Arkansas with a Bachelor of Science degree in Business Administration the following year while still playing football. He completed his MBA as a grad student being the first Razorback football player to ever complete 
a master's degree before playing his final game, which was in which was the 1999 Citrus Bowl. Burlsworth was selected to the third round of the 1999 NFL draft by the Indianapolis Colts, and he was penciled in as a starter his rookie season as an offensive guard. He went from being someone who was never going to make it to someone who achieved higher than even his own expectations because he was focused on achieving his desired goals. I encourage you to read that book or to watch that movie. But today, what we want to turn our attention to is the focus of the Apostle Peter. After Jesus' resurrection and, and, and ascension, it seems that Peter was more focused than ever to obey the word of the Lord. So let's look here in this text as we look in verses 14 through 21, the first part of this sermon. Maybe, maybe it's part one or, or part A of the full sermon that's broken in at least three or four different parts. But we want to look here at this first part in verses 14 through 21. The Bible says, but Peter, standing in the, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, men of Judea and all whom dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words. For these are not drunk, as you suppose, since... It is only the third hour of the day, but this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your men shall see visions. Your old women shall dream. Your old men shall dream dreams. And all my ma men servants and all my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above. And signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. When we look in this passage, we see Peter sharing God's word. To people so that they can become the people of God. This is God's word. Would you pray with me? God, as we do come before you right now, we just thank you for this day that you've given us. We thank you for your word that we can proclaim in your house. And we pray, God, that you would take these broken words and fix and form and fashion them in the hearts of each one that is listening. And we pray, God, that you would move upon us in a mighty and powerful way. Do what only you can do. And we give you praise, glory, and honor for it all. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. So as we do approach this text, it becomes clear that Peter took the words of Jesus very seriously. If we recall, Peter's last conversation with Jesus left him pleading, trying to assure Jesus that he loved him. Jesus asked Peter the same question, do you love me? Three different times and twice, twice Peter has the same answer, which is yes, Lord, you know that I love you. But on the third time, when Jesus asked Peter this same question, Peter seems to get agitated. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that, that Peter was grieved that the Lord asked him on the third time. But Peter says, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Oh, with each answer of Peter, Jesus responded. First, he says to Peter, feed my lambs. When Peter answers him a second time, he tells him, Jesus tells him to tend my sheep. And the last time when Peter responded, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus says, feed my sheep. And right now, Jesus has ascended to the right hand of his, of his heavenly father. The Holy Spirit has just indwelled these disciples. And now Peter begins to feed the sheep. 
he begins to preach the gospel. The gospel, the preaching of the gospel is commenced and Peter's the one who's kicking it off. So let me say this as we prepare to continue. Peter is definitely serious about the word of God. How do we know this? Well, in the first part of of this message, we see his focus. His focus is on the truth of what took place. Peter recognized that what was being said of the disciples. We remember over in verse 13, up in verse 13, that that as the Spirit of God had come upon them and they were speaking in, in, other langu- in a language to where everybody was able to understand in their own language and they were joyous and they were celebrating and they were happy and they were just having a, a time with themselves and with the Lord that others thought that they were drunk. They mocked them thinking that they and, and, and accusing them of being intoxicated or being drunk. Well, Peter recognized what was being said. Peter recognized how they were being mocked for their behavior. You know, what was taking place was something unusual. It was was something like no one had ever seen. And the believers were filled with the Holy Spirit. They were full of the Spirit of God. In other words, they were full of the presence of God. And because of that, they were joyous. And I, I'm come to this place in my life that once you're filled with the presence of God, and I, I mean full of his presence, there's no other way you can be but joyous. I don't know about you, but when the presence of God is strong in my life, it can seem like my cup runs over. What that means is that that the joy inside of me can get so full that it begins to spill over to the outside of of me. When this happens, we're likely to see an assortment of unique behaviors that just might be out of character for someone in any other situation. I mean, some might just squall out. Some might stand and, and share just how good God has been to them. Others might stand with outstretched arms just praising and worshiping God. And there are those who maybe get way out of character and they're, they're running or they're walking all over the sanctuary just praising God for his goodness. I'm talking about being so filled up, F-I-L-L-E-D, so filled up that your cup runs over. And you know, even in these times with some, they may just, as their cup is running over, you may see them just weeping. They're not running around. They're not walking around. They're not standing up. They're not saying anything. They're just weeping because of the joy of the presence of God. This behavior of the disciples, it required an explanation for these men who had never seen such or never experienced such. It's not every day that you see a behavior like this. As a matter of fact, while living in a world that's full of trials, a world that's full of uncertainty, that's filled with struggles and and suffering and death, it's no wonder people would look at at us when we're when we're joyous and because of what God has done for us, and and that we they may look at us as being odd or being strange, or that, that we might be under the influence of alcohol. So Peter stands up. And he declares that these men are not drunk. Well, God led you on Thursday evening. And I believe with everything in me that God led you to do what you've done. I was filled with emotion more than you'll ever really understand. But just to give you a little bit of it, it... At first, I was confused. If you saw the videos, you should have seen how confused I was until Taylor and Iola shared, this is for us. This is for you. And then I was just amazed. I was amazed at how so many would come out on behalf of this church and just to let my family know, let me know that we are loved and appreciated. But I wasn't just confused. I wasn't just amazed, but I, I, I just, I was marveling at, at what was taking place. There were, there was one less than six months old and, and all the way up to the age of 90 that was in this parade and just to let us know how much they loved us. Man, there was a sacrifice that was made. I marveled at, at the sacrifice to where 
People left their community. I'm not talking about a mile or two down the road, but you left your community to come to my community just to bless us. Yes, I was filled with all sorts of emotions. I don't know that I wanted to run around the yard, but you'll never know how much I thank God for all that you, for all of you and all that you've done. I was so filled with the spirit of God because what you did was an act of love and it, it only comes from God. And you don't know how much I needed it in that moment. I was so filled. We stayed up that night talking about it. And the next morning I woke up filled up so that in the doctor's office getting my allergy shots, I had to fight back tears. Driving down the road to come to, to the church, I was fighting back tears. And when I got my office, I, I couldn't fight them back. I just wept so that I couldn't focus on anything else. I couldn't get anything accomplished. And you, if you would have walked in, you would have saw a red-eyed, teary-eyed man. And he, eventually I just had to leave. And this is because I was filled and my cup was running over. Listen, let me make sure we're clear. Let this be known to you and heed my words. I was not drunk, nor was I under the any, any influence of narcotics. But if you would have walked in, you would have seen a man who was just filled with the presence of God. My cup was still running over. Folks, on the day of our salvation, the Spirit of God takes residence in us. He indwells us. But from time to time, He gives us a, a renewed feeling of His presence. Now, don't get it twisted. I know where I'm at. I know what I said last week. We live in a sin-cursed world and, and with everything that we encounter in this world, there are times when we don't feel the presence of God. I mean, we don't feel the indwelled spirit of God in our lives. That's when we're walking by faith. Folks, if you know that you've been born again, you know that the spirit of God dwells within you. But God... Oh, and I'm so glad we can use that. But God, God, in his perfect will, in his perfect timing, he will fill us, F-I-L-L. -L. He will fill us with his presence in such a way that we feel F-E-E-L. -E we feel his moving in us. Oh, it's a wonderful time. It's a wonderful time. Listen, unsaved, I want you to be aware that when God fills us, his children, with his presence, or he allows us to feel his Holy Spirit and our cup runs over. You can rest assured we're not drunk. When we testify of the goodness of God, we're not speaking foolish things. When we get out of character or get a little rowdy, it's okay. It's just God fulfilling his promise to his people. Yes, here we see Peter in verses 14 through 16. He's declaring the truth of what's taking place. They thought they were drunk, but Peter is declaring they're not drunk. What they're seeing is the fulfillment of scripture. So we see he focuses now on the testimony of God's word. In verses 17 through 21, we begin to see that Peter gets into the meat of his message. He begins by speaking the words of the prophet Joel. And you'll find these same words that Peter is speaking in Joel 2, 28 through 32. Or at least the first part of 32. And he shares this same message. But Joel prophesies this many, many years. More than 400 years prior to the coming of the last days. Joel 2 and 28 says, and it shall come to pass afterwards. That's how Joel introduces his message. And here in the text in Acts, Peter says, and it shall come to pass in the last days. What are the last days? <laughs> well, the last days began when Jesus came to earth and the last days will end when Jesus returns back to the earth to receive his bride, to receive his church. 
Some of you remember what it's like to live in the last days. Some of you remember the last days of the outhouse being a regular part of your home. Some of you remember the last days of a black and white television. Some of us remember the last days of bell-bottom plaid pants, or at least I hope we've seen the last days of those. I don't know. Maybe we've seen the last days of shaking hands and hugging necks. I pray not, but we don't know. And here... What we're looking at is the prophecy of Joel being fulfilled. So today, we are in the last days. When we look here at what Peter is saying, we have to remember we are in the last days. The last days of the dispensation of, of God's grace. We're in the last days of the church age. We're in the last days of the age of the gospel. Do you know what's interesting about this? We're 2,020 years in to the last days. Get that, 2,020 years into the last days. How long do you think it's going to go on? How long, how much longer do you think it'll be before Jesus comes? I'm convinced it's not going to be very much longer. So unsaved, you need to start getting things in order for Jesus is coming soon. We're, we look in this passage, we see that we're in the last days of the outpouring of God's spirit. In other words, we're in the last days of, of God giving his Holy Spirit to indwell those who receive Jesus Christ as their personal savior. First Corinthians 9, 6, 19 and 20, it tells us, do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God and whom you are not your own for you were bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's and we're in the last days of this so we should take every opportunity to glorify God in our body and in our spirit we're in the last days where God's pouring out his spirit upon all flesh I'm talking about sons and daughters men and women, young men, young women, maid servants men servants old men right now God does not discriminate your background, your race, your gender, your social status, your financial status doesn't matter. If you come to the Lord, you shall be saved. But, but there's coming a time when it won't be that easy. There's coming a time when it'll be focused on those who've never heard the gospel and the Jews. Right now, whosoever will can come. But we're in the last days of this. We don't know how long these last days are going to last, but what I know is we're in the last days. We're in the last days of the spiritual gifts, the gifts of prophecy and visions and dreams. We're in the last days of signs and wonders. We're in the last days when you can sense the spirit of God leading you to call upon the name of the Lord. In, the, in other words, you're in the last days when salvation is being made simple. We're in the last days that if you acknowledge that you are a sinner. We're in the last days that if you acknowledge that you're in need of a savior and you believe that Jesus is the son of God, the savior of the world. If you believe that he lived a sinless life and died a sinner's death and his blood was shed for the forgiveness of your sin and you repent of your sins and call upon the name of of Jesus as to be your savior and you, you will be saved. We're in the last days of this time. Romans 10, 9 through 10 tells us that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and you believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Listen, folks, Peter is focused on this portion of, uh, of his message to tell us the truth of what took place and tell us the testimony of God's word. And the testimony of God's word is that we're in the last days. And he's focusing on that. And I believe that as a church, as a minister of the gospel, being in the last days, it should be our focus. Our focus to reach out to those who are on their way to a dying a dying and demon hell so that you will have the opportunity now in these days to know Jesus as your savior. Because there's coming a day, there's coming a day when the spirit of God will not lead you. There's coming a day when he won't be indwelling you but instead you will have to endure 
unto the end. We're not enduring our salvation today. We're enjoying our salvation, but there is coming a day. There's coming a day when the only way you can be saved is that you endure all the tribulation, all the trials that take place as Satan takes lead. Listen, folks, it's not a day that you want to bank on here in these last days. In this age, in these last days of the church age, now is the, now, now is the time to receive Jesus as your personal Savior. Peter's focus is completely on sharing the truth and testifying to God's word. Today for you who don't have a relationship with God through, your, through his son, Jesus Christ. It would be a great day for you to focus on the truth of your walk with the Lord and focus on the testimony of God's word to you. God's word tells you, it tells me that you must be born again to see the kingdom of God. His word testifies to you in Romans 3 and 23, for all have sinned to come short of the glory of God. I want to tell you, you're not all by yourself. You're not alone. We were all, we've all fell short. We've all uh, missed the mark. We've all come, we've come short of the, the, the glory of God. We've all had to come by Jesus. The Bible tells us in Romans 6 and 23 that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And we all had to come to terms that if we continued the way we were living, and you must come to terms that if you continue the way you're living, you're going to have to pay the penalty of your sin. But I want to encourage you, you don't have to pay the penalty of your sin. Jesus paid the penalty of your sin. He, he's willing to take the penalty away from you if you'll call out to him and, and give you the gift of God, which is eternal life in Christ Jesus. For God demonstrated his love toward you that while you are a sinner, that his son, Jesus Christ, died for you. In Romans 10 and 9, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus as Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised it from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10 and 13 assures you that, that whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And once we get those promises in hand, I mean, once we are saved, we're also given more promises. Romans 5 and 1 says, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We can know because we're a child of his, we're at peace with him. Romans 8 and 1 assures us that there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who who. Do not walk according to the flesh, but walk according to the spirit. Romans 38, Romans 8, 38 and 39, Paul says, oh, what encouraging words, he says. That I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor neither height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. So my question to you right now, in this moment, for these next few moments, while we're in these last days, are you ready now to receive Jesus as your personal Savior? Folks, we're in the last days. Oh, if you're ready, if you're ready now to give your heart to Jesus, I invite you to pray with us. Just repeat this prayer after me. God, I thank you for loving me. God, I know I am a sinner. I've fallen short of your glory. God, I need a savior. God, I believe Jesus is the savior of the world. I believe he's your only begotten son. I believe he died and poured out his blood so that I could be forgiven. God, I repent of my sins. And I call upon the name of Jesus. Forgive me 
save me. Oh, God, I thank you for saving me. I thank you for forgiving me. Oh, God, now help me. Help me, God, to walk in a new life, a life filled with your spirit, a life that's followed, a life that's following you. Now, God, thank you for what you've done. I thank you for what you're doing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, if you prayed this prayer and you meant it from the bottom of your heart, that you truly repented of your sins and you truly believe who Jesus is. Oh, I believe you've done enough to be saved, but it's not enough for me to believe it. You've got to be satisfied. You've got to believe that he has forgiven you. Oh, if you call upon him, he will. If you called upon him, he has. Will you trust him? Oh, if you trust him as your savior, how about calling us? Or messaging us on Facebook. Calling the church. Go to our website. You can get the information about the church on our website, readybranch.org. You can go to our Facebook page and, and comment in the link below or you, can, or you can send us an inbox to let us know that you received Jesus as your Savior today and let us celebrate with you. Let our cup runneth over along with yours. and We'll give God praise for it all. Oh, we thank you for tuning in. Reedy Branch, we love you. We miss you. And we want you to know that, that we appreciate you so much. We're longing for the day when the sanctuary is full again. Longing for the day when we get to worship and praise God together as a body of believers. We pray God's blessings upon you until then. Amen.
you, Jesus. Amen. Oh, glory, glory, glory. Thank you. Holy oh, yes. is your name, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Good sir. Good sir. Praise his holy name. Worship him. Praise him, brother. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory, glory.